do an example of a spherical capacitor. The point of doing this is just to give you an example of calculating the capacitance, but also to demonstrate the equivalency of the energy stored in the capacitor uh, calculated using uh, 1 half Q squared over C, um, and also using the energy density of the electric field. So I introduced in class that the electric field um, is you know has has real energy associated with it and the density of that energy um, number of joules per unit volume um, is epsilon naught over two times e squared and so if I want to calculate the the total energy stored and again that energy that's stored in the field is the same as the energy that is associated with the the distribution of charge so as we've talked about assembling charge um, and doing work to do that that's the same energy the energy goes into the electric field um, so the total energy of our distribution of charges that produce this electric field will then be the integral of that curly u over volume okay so let's take a spherical capacitor so I have um, uh, two spherical concentric conductors okay they can be both shells or the middle one can have uh, can be uh, you know a solid piece of metal for example uh, I'll put plus Q on this one I'll put minus Q on the outside um, and then the question is, what's the uh, capacitance and what's the energy stored in this case? Okay. So I, in the class I went over this, but I'll do it again. Okay. The electric field in this case is finite or has non-zero value, value only in the region between the two uh, conductors. And we know what the electric field looks like. Okay. It's going to look like the field of a point charge with the value plus Q. Um, okay. You can again get that from uh, uh, Gauss's law calculation so that's our electric field in, inside the plates okay um, in the middle conductor uh, the electric field is zero the outer uh, outside the the outer conductor the electric field is zero okay so let me give some dimensions here uh, try to actually let me make some room okay so this inner conductor we're going to give uh, radius A. Okay, and the outer conductor, let's say radius B. Okay, let me put back my charge plus Q on this inner conductor. Okay. Um, all right, so just to be clear again, this inner conductor may be a solid piece. This is vacuum in this region here, and then I have uh, a metal shell on the outside. Okay, all right, so this is the field inside. All right, to get the capacitance, what I want to know is how much uh, charge I store for a given potential difference, or if I put, you know, charge on this system, what's the potential difference that arises? And so I can calculate the potential difference. Um, so the potential difference between the plates will be the same as integrating from A to B of E dot DL. Okay, and the, I can choose any path I want, but the easiest one to pick is one that just goes straight radially. So I can go straight from this point here out to this point. Okay, and so my DL in that case will be um, r hat times dr, okay? All right, and so now if I um, go through and do this integral, and maybe I'll spare you the details, but if you take this uh, expression for the electric field up here and now plug it in uh, down here, what you find is that the potential difference between the shells um, looks like q, over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, 1 over a minus 1 over b okay all right and from that now I can extract the capacitance let me do that unfortunately it's on the previous page but to get the capacitance I just uh, the definition of the capacitance is it's that's it's the geometric factor that um, multiplies um, is the difference or the um, the factor that relates the potential difference to the charge okay so let me go back and we can stare at it okay so if I go back and stare at this expression uh, down here I see that uh, basically C is going to be 1 over the thing that's dividing Q so everything here I take I invert that 
And if I do that, the capacitance for my spherical conductor is 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 over a minus 1 over b to the minus 1. Okay, that's supposed to be minus 1. There we go. All right. Now, so the second uh, purpose of this video is to demonstrate the equivalence of using that energy density expression and using an expression like uh, the following. So I can calculate the total energy stored in this capacitor in this case using several different expressions. I'll write them all out. 1 half QV is the same as 1 half CV squared is the same as 1 half Q squared over C. Again, these are always equal to each other. Always. Okay? Um, sometimes one is more useful than the other, though. Um, so in this case, um, why don't we just use the um, first one here? Okay? Because I just wrote down the expression for the potential difference. So what I'm going to say is that the total energy stored by this capacitance is 1 half Q times that delta V. I'm being fast and loose, as I say, with these... Um, uh, voltages, what I mean here is the potential difference between the two plates that make up the capacitor. Okay, And so in that case, what I have is that the, uh, the energy is Q squared over 4, uh, sorry, that's an 8 now with a 2 there, 8 pi epsilon naught times 1 over A minus 1 over B. Okay, So that's the energy that it takes to place the charge in the, on the capacitor in, in the way that we um, talked about earlier, where you have plus Q on the central sphere and minus Q on the outer sphere. Okay, so now let's go and calculate it as if um, the electric field, I mean, it is the truth that the electric field is where the energy is stored, okay? Um, now, when I say that, so you can, you can equate that to thinking about energy being stored in a spring. So if I talk about potential energy of a spring, that's something you can kind of uh, see, okay, or visualize. When you when you push, you know, compress a spring, there's energy stored there. You can think about the, uh, when you bring two charges together, the potential energy is not as visible, okay? There's an interaction there that's pushing them apart. And, it, you know, the way that you can visualize the um, interaction between the two is that the electric field that these two particles, as you bring them together, so take my two particles, the electric field that these two particles produce is where the uh, energy is going to be stored, okay? Um, and so if I, you know, bring two particles together or bring two plates together, I can calculate the energy, uh, the potential energy in that situation by just integrating the electric field over all space, okay? Let's ignore that. Let's go and do that now for this case. So again, in this case, we know that we have a spherical capacitor. We know electric field is only present um, in this region here, in between. And so that electric field is um, Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R, R hat. OK, oops. I'm being a little sloppy here, sorry. There we go. Um, sorry. And in fact, very sloppy because I forgot the squared. Did I do that in the first place? I hope not. I think I got it right back there. Let's check. Ah, I'm good. All right, fine. I got the square there. Um, Okay, and let's go back here. Sorry. Okay, so here's my electric field. It's in the R hat direction. Um, now what we can do is write down that expression. So the, the total energy now that's stored in this electric field is the integral uh, of over that electric field. Now the integral has to be over all of space. So if the electric field extends out, like from a point charge, I would integrate all the way out to infinity. But here I know the electric field is confined to this region here. Okay, there's no electric field except in this vacuum region between the two capacitor plates. And so I know I can just integrate um, from A to B um, over this volume. And so I'm, because I know it's spherically symmetric, my volume is just going to be 4 pi, volume element will be 4 pi r squared dr. So I don't have to do the angle very, uh, integrals. Okay, And then I'm going to multiply by that epsilon naught over 2 e squared. So e squared will be q squared over 4 pi squared 
um, epsilon naught squared r to the fourth. Okay. All right, and now let me bring coefficients, the constants out front. I'm going to get one of these four pi's here to cancel one of those four pi's. Um, so I'm going to have an 8 pi, which is good. That's what I expect from my answer before. So q squared over 8 pi epsilon naught. Um, and sorry, epsilon naught squared. And so these cancel here. Okay, so I get one epsilon naught coming out. And then my integral will be of uh, dr over r squared um, from a to b. And in fact, that gives me the answer that we got before, which is going to be q squared over 8 pi epsilon naught um, 1 over a minus 1 over b. OK, same answer as before. Um, all right, so you see both of these approaches where I either calculate the capacitance, then use that, uh, or calculate the potential difference, and use that to calculate the, uh, the energy um, using the 1 half QV or 1 half CV squared or 1 half Q squared over C. Or if I integrate the electric field over the volume where it exists, um, both of those techniques get me the same answer. So I can think about the energy being stored in the electric field, and that's useful intuition, okay, when you're looking at something changing in a problem. All right, I'll stop there.